Yesterday, um, in the lecture, uh, I talked about the um, eight fold screen, um, King Jongjo's visit to Hasong, and we saw the um, whole, we uh, went through the whole theme, overall theme of the screen. In, and today, um, I'm going to focus on the seventh panel of the screen in detail. And since um, Professor Chang um, ex explained the historical context uh, behind the screen in detail, I'm just going to jump into the seventh panel. Um, OK, then let me um, skip this, as you have already known this, um, heard about it. And we're going to focus on this panel, now exhibited um, in the hall. The seventh panel, just one of the eight panels. Unlike the other panels, um, which uh, depicted specific events in Hwasong, the seventh panel, um, royal precious, um, the seventh panel focuses entirely on the procession itself, showing the group leaving Hwasong and passing through Shiheng. The fact that the procession was chosen as an independent theme testifies that this ceremony represented much more than mere arrival and departure. In fact, the procession itself was one of the core issues of the journey. This screen marks the first time a procession scene was ever depicted in Korea. So um, now there are five versions left. And I'm going to talk about um, one in Samsung Museum, now exhibited in the room, in the hall, um, because it is the uh, finest version and also in the best condition. First, I will briefly uh, compare the paintings to the original procession as described by primary source in order to assess how the scene is represented. Then I will look more closely at the specific setting that was chosen for the painting in order to decipher what King Jongjo intended to communicate with this work. The most notable feature of the return procession of King Jongjo is that it attempts to portray virtually the entire length of parade without enlarging or omitting any parts. The, com the composition of troops in the procession was actually one of Jongjo's main concerns in preparing the journey. 80% of members of the procession are soldiers from various military units, and the procession itself was part of military review um, conducted by the king himself. The precise arrangement of the parade was important, not only for practical reasons concerning military training, but also for symbolic reasons. Every member of the parade is in proper position to escort the king, symbolizing the establishment of a centralized governing order. The march was planned and rehearsed according to the plan put, um, Painting a position in order, panchado, here. And the composition of the return position of the King Jongjo, um, the painting, are uh, astonishingly similar to those in the original work. This affin um, affinity demonstrates that the work is painted realistically, but it also implies that the main purpose of the depiction was to display the parade in proper order and position. Throughout his reign, Zhongzhou system, systemized royal rites and rituals in an effort to solidify royal authority. And the visualization of the order was part of the project. In the first um, of his reign, Zhongzhou noticed that assemb um, assemblies were quite disordered, so he erected guideposts for each rank, so that the officials 
would always be properly aligned. The following year, he ordered a diagram print which showed the position of all attendants in the morning's assembly. And this wood block print on the left was used not only to inform his officials of the ceremony protocols, but also a model um, uh, for, of the proper arrangement for documentary paintings. I examined um, these um, names with their position, they exactly match it. It was considered taboo uh, to depict a king in a work of art, which is why painting of a state a rituals typically feature an empty chair at the center to represent a king. Similarly, the painting of procession uses an empty horse to indicate the king's position. Thus, uh, the king's pres uh, presence is not emphasized by exaggerating his size or glamorizing his form. Instead, the royal authority is demonstrated by the perfectly arranged rules of a pr procession, which implicate the control of a governing order and rules of propriety. The key difference between the panel and the painting is that the former features a background setting that clearly indicates significant time and place. To be exact, the painting takes place, place just as King Zhongzhou has stopped the procession to offer a cup of tea to his mother, Princess Hegyeong. In the upper part of the panel, there are um, a large contingent of guards surrounding a palanquin, which is where Princess Hegyeong is located. A blue cloth has been laid out for her uh, to rest in, while court maids wait to serve her. Amazing. Um, to one side, we see food, food uh, carts and a tent where food will be prepared. The, tab the taboo against depicting the king also applied to royal family members, so we cannot directly witness King Zhongzhou offering a cup of tea to his mother. But all of these circumstances, um, other details indicate a tea ceremony. Then why was this particular moment selected as a theme of the procession? It is cl closely related to the nominal objective of the year's journey, which is to celebrate the 60th birthday of his parents. The event depicted on the panels, birthday ceremony, banquet, a special exam, they all commemorate this milestone and Zhongzhou repeatedly displayed his filial piety through the journey. He stopped the procession eight times to check on his mother's condition and offer her refreshments. And he personally checked her bed and food each day. The troop of offering tea effectively visualizes the king's filial piety, which was the main purpose of the journey. Zhongzhou's devotion to his mother goes beyond the love of ordinary son, as it also involves dynastic filialness. His, father, his father's dishonorable death had significantly degraded his mother's status. So Zhongzhou enacted various projects to restore his mother's status from princess, from princess to Empress Duaga. For instance, the, um, in the procession, Zhongzhou insisted that the scale of his mother's contingent of guards be that of Empress Duaga. Such actions were intended to reinforce both his authority and his devotion to his mother. The political dimension of filial piety is suggested by the composition of the painting. Princess Hagen's palaquin is the most notable aspect of the painting. And it lies on the same vertical axis as dragon flag and the flag of honor, which symbolize royal authority.
The scene takes place in Shiheng, a city on the way from Hwasong to Seoul. The building in the lower left-hand corner is Shiheng Palace, which is surrounded by military guards awaiting the arrival of the king. The palace where the tea is offered, oh yeah, you can see the detail. The palace, um, uh, the place where the tea is offered is some 30 miles away from the palace. So the procession could not possibly stretch all the way to the entrance of the palace as shown. Yeah, yes. It is shown as if it is all stretched out to the palace. The fact that the painting um, sacrificed geographical accuracy um, in order to show the palace, them, um, the palace, in order to show the palace, I mean, include the palace in the painting, demonstrated the significance of the setting. The palace is actually brand new, um, having been built at Jongjo's uh, behest in preparation for the for this year's special visit. So it was just built. Um, Jongjo decided that the old road passed over Namtaeryeong hill was too rough and narrow and therefore unsuitable for the grand procession so he ordered the construction of a new road across flat um, land of Shihun. so this is the new road also just built just construct, constructed for this um, procession the painting um yeah so so because the procession will take place um, on this road, um, they need another palace here, um, where king and queen um, and princess Hegyeong can stay overnight and rest on. The painting is clearly composed to highlight the results of this major project, which is um, construction of Jing Road and the palace. Um, the um, <coughs> Zhongzhou was actively developing Hwasong as a secondary capital, and Xiheng was being similarly de developed to support Hwasong, both economically and militarily. Thus, the new road was not solely to accommodate the procession, but also to stimulate the local economy and improve military transport. Also, while the road was being built, Zhongzhou renamed many of the places along the road, giving them names signifying um, his kingship. For example, Simple Sand Province, here, oops, became Great Peace Province, and um, words such as small and modest are replaced with big, great, and emperor. The new names were carved into steel, steelers and displayed along the road. Furthermore, he officially declared the new road to be the royal road and even changed the name of the city from Kumcheon to Shiheng. Kumcheon, which means silky stream, to Shiheng, beginning of prosperity. The wide expanse of the road and the splendid Shiheng Palace uh, conspicuously depicted in the painting, enabling, enabling the viewer to easily relate the royal procession with the beginning of prosperity that Shiheng was meant to represent. It is also telling that the repro the, this painting um, chose to document Jongjo's return from Hwasong, rather than his departure. Traditionally, when the king was returning to the palace, he, he would stop along the way to hear appeals from the people and give away rice and other gifts. Confucian values did, um, dictated that a traveling monarch must take heed to observe the popular sentiment and resolve any problems in person. 
And the historical records show that Chongzhou upheld his, this tradition by meeting public on his way back to capital. The morning he, after his stay at Xi'an Palace, Chongzhou ordered local officials to gather the people and collect their grievances. Um, the people responded that they had no significant problems thanks to the benevolence of their wonderful king, with, uh, with one small exception. Twice a year, they were required to perform labor. Chongzhou ordered local officers to reevaluate their labor system and also granted um, the people of Xiheng tax exemption. Thus, in the background of the panel, the streets are lined with people eager to praise their compassionate king. But the people were not gathered just to make appeals to King Zhongzhou. Records indicate that many of them are, si are simply sightseers, who returned out to watch the parade. Zhongzhou actively encouraged people to come watch the procession even going so far as to lift the regular curfew if the procession should last into the night. The procession must have been quite a spectacle for the common people, with about 1,000 horses, 200 flags, and 100 bands with royal musical instruments. With hundreds of hundred drummers pounding on rhythms, colorful flags embroidering the sky, and the fragrance of incense filling the air, the parade was an overwhelming sensual experience. And all of the sensations uh, served to deeply imprint the minds of the participants and the spectators with the power of the royal authority. Interestingly, some of sightseers appear to be enjoying the scene um, in a very casual manner, cheering, even drinking. One woman seems to be selling wine in a tent, and some people even in the crowd appear to be drunk. Such a festive scene supposedly embodied the jubilance cheered by His Majesty and the entire realm, as they joined in, ce in the celebration of longevity of the royal family and Zhongzhou's benevolent reign. Chongzhou once uh, uh, linked the jubilant crowd to a golden field of fully ripened rice. Um, like a good harvest, a festive gathering of happy citizens was a sign of successful governing and a blessing from God. The ovation of people symbolized Chongzhou's politics based on the love for people and the, the age of great peace and prosperity. The return procession of King Zhongzhou depicted King Zhongzhou's royal procession in 1795 from his father's tomb in Hwasong. This painting was the first ever painting of a royal procession to be based on the official marching plans, the painting, of the, the painting position in order, Panchado. The purpose of the painting was to capture the full composition of the procession in proper order in order to implicate the control of governing order and rules of, prosper, uh, rules of property. The painting also depicts some of the concrete and multifaceted goals of the procession with its imposing background settings. The three settings in return procession of King Zhongzhou, the tea offering ceremony, the city of Xiheng, and the return scenes were specifically selected to represent the three accomplishments of Zhongzhou's journey, the establishment of his legitimacy through filial piety, the development of cities around Hwasong, and his reign of peace and harmony. These selected memories were meant to be imparted on the minds of 15 officers and the families to whom the screens were bestowed by the king. The exact extent of Chongzhou's involvement with the production of the screen is not known in, doc in, the, in documents. 
but it is evident that he was the first king to adopt a system wherein the central government took charge of the production and distribution of visual records of the procession. In other words, the return procession of King Zhongzhou, this painting, clearly conveys Zhongzhou's wish to control how the procession would be remembered. Thank you.